Isaiah chapter number 6. Begin reading verse number 1. The great prophet was inspired to pin this down. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure have enjoyed being in church this morning. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for good congregational singing. We thank you for good youth choir singing. Thank you for good special singing and good testimonies. Thank you for good time of fellowship. Lord, it's all been good, and we bless your holy name. Lord, we're thankful we've got this place on this little side of a hill we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Fathers, we come to you this morning. We come with grateful hearts thanking you for the good grace of God. Thanking you, Lord, that you didn't leave us where you found us. Thank you, Lord, that you placed us in the church. We're glad you loved the church and you gave yourself for it. We're thankful, Lord, for that day you climbed up Calvary's hill and God yielded yourself to the cross and was crucified and bled and died for our sins and then rose again, Lord, according to the Scriptures. Uh, Lord, I'm glad that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. And God, you are the resurrection and the life. Uh, God, I'm thankful for the blessed hope we have in Christ. Uh, God, I'm thankful, Lord, for that day you wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life. And God, I'm thankful for the blessings of God in my life. Uh, Lord, I'm thankful to be here today. Now, Father, you alone know the heart of everyone that is here and everyone that's watching via live stream. God, I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel and God, you'd give the, uh, help me to preach that which you've given me and God, I pray you'd use my feeble efforts and you'd take the word of God and you'd speak to hearts. I pray if there be any amongst us today that could not sing that song Brother James just sang, doesn't know the grace of God. They're strangers to it. Uh, Lord, I'm thankful they're in church but they've never been saved by the good grace of God. Uh, Lord, they may have been baptized, may be a member of a church, may uh, have done a lot of religious things, but they've never been born again. I pray today would be the day the sweet Holy Ghost of God would show them their lost condition. And God, I pray they'd come and trust the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And then, God, I pray for the people of God. Lord, there's no telling the trials. There's no telling the burdens. There's no telling what they have faced this week or what they'll face in the week to come. But God, you know all things. And God, I pray you'd edify and build up and encourage your people. I do pray for those that are cold and indifferent on God. They've just let life get in the way. They've let problems get in the way. I pray today would be the day you warm their heart and revive their spirit. I pray for that one that's struggling, Lord, you'd help them. I pray for that one that, Lord, is seeking something from thee, that, God, you'd reveal it to them. God, I pray for that one that is hungering for thee, that they would be full. And God, I certainly pray you would revive us, and, Lord, help us to reach a plateau spiritually we've never seen before. God, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Put a hedge about us now. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray you'd give victory to folks. And I pray that you'd be glorified in our midst. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of our darling Savior, the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. 
Amen. I won't preach long today. I'll preach long enough, but I won't preach long today. But I do have a thought from these verses the Lord showed me. I want you as a way of introduction to notice that Isaiah saw vision. We find in verses 1 and 2 that he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and then he saw seraphims uh, uh, flying about the throne. This is the only place in the Bible you find uh, seraphims. Uh, 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 they have six wings, and they have some special qualities. Uh, but all we know about them, Brother Sammy, is they fly above the throne of God. That's all we know about them. Uh, 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 but we know that Isaiah got a glimpse of them. He saw a vision. He also heard a voice. Uh, we find in verses 3 and 4 that he hears the seraphim crying one to another, Holy, holy, holy. Uh, and in verse 4 it said, In the post of the door of the house of God moved at the voice of him that cried. Uh, so he got a vision and he heard a voice uh, and then he discovered his own value. Let me just say this today. Now, uh, most of us think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We spend a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money uh, on products and looking at ourselves in mirrors. Hmm? It's amazing I can look in a mirror and see George Clooney. But my wife is quick to correct me that I'm no George Clooney. Hmm? Uh, but we can, we have this innate ability as human beings to put ourselves on pedestals that we really don't belong on. And the Bible says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. And you can convince yourself of anything. But it's amazing when Isaiah saw the Lord and he saw the seraphim and he heard what the seraphim had to say. He gets a perspective about himself he didn't have any more before. He discovers his value. Look at verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Now this is a man that was anointed prophet of all of Israel. This is a man that all of Israel looked to for spiritual direction. Uh, uh, no doubt when he walked down the street, they said, Oh, that's Isaiah the prophet. Uh, oh, Isaiah's on the scene. Oh, we're going to hear from God today. And maybe some of that stunk, snuck in his ear and sunk down in his heart. They got lifted up with a little bit of pride. You do know the middle letter of pride is I. It amazes me. That's also the same middle letter of the word sin. But we find when things were put in proper perspective, he found out what his real value was. He said, I'm undone, and I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm interested in verse number 4. The Bible says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and here's what I'm interested in. And the house was filled with smoke. I'm going to preach with God's help this morning on the house filled with smoke. Now can I say that smoke here represents the presence of God. Now it amazes me, Brother Ron, uh, you know I have a pretty vast library and I pulled out some commentaries and look, and it amazed me how many of those commentators were trying to say that there was such an outpouring of incense uh, in the sanctuary that morning that that's all we saw was smoke. Had nothing to do with incense. Uh, he'd seen incense before. Brother James, incense didn't cause him to say, I'm undone, unclean. No, the smoke represents the presence of God. Uh, I did a little research about smoke, and let me give you some things I found out. Can I say that uh, smoke is the byproduct of fire? You can't have smoke if you don't have fire. Can I say that's what's wrong with a lot of churches? They don't have any smoke. They don't have the presence of God uh, because there's no fire. Uh, I'm reminded Jeremiah when he threw in the town was ready to quit. Uh, he said, but there was a fire shut up in my bones uh, that I could not stay. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, you don't need a lot of fire. Uh, you just need some fire. Uh, and if you've got fire, you're a candidate to have some smoke. Mm. So smoke is the byproduct of fire. Can I say secondly that smoke is used for pest control? Now I've been on the island 
And every morning down there at Coconut Bay, very early, they come around and they're spraying some kind of smoke on all the bushes uh, to get rid of all them critters that are going to bite me when I go out there to see the uh, seashore. Uh, smoke is good for pest control. You know what will keep the devil away? If we get a little smoke around here. Are you listening? Uh, it keeps all the pests and all the critters away. Uh, hey, it will keep uh, uh, the imps and all that they have to throw at us away if we'll have a little bit of smoke. Uh, not only is it a byproduct of fire, not only is it used for pest control, but smoke can be used to communicate. Have you ever heard of smoke signals? Huh? What can I say? Hallelujah. When the presence of God shows up, He'll start communicating in ways you've never heard before. Huh? Then I thought about this. Uh, smoke is also used by the military. It has offensive and defensive capabilities. Hmm? A lot of times they'll do what they call a flashbang. Uh, uh, they'll throw something in that causes smoke to uh, uh, cause the enemy to become disillusioned so they can go in and capture, uh, capture them. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, they'll throw smoke up as a defense so the enemy can't see them so they can get away. Can I say the presence of God is our best offense and defense? Uh, because when his presence is known, the enemy loses all sight of us. Uh, and we're able to take things back that he's laid claim to. Hmm? I found something else out about smoke. Smoke needs two things to happen. It needs fuel and oxygen. Now the fuel comes from the fire, but it needs air. It needs fuel and oxygen. Well, the fuel represents a couple things. Can I say, first of all, uh, the presence of God is fueled by prayer. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier, we don't pray enough. Uh, uh, Spurgeon said this, uh, We cannot communicate with God, who is a consuming fire, if there is no fire in our prayers. Uh, uh, the reason we don't see revival, the reason we don't see folks saved, uh, uh, the reason we don't see our prayers answered, uh, because they're just vain words from our lips. Uh, they're sound breaths and tinkling symbols to heaven. But if you ever get a fire blazing in your soul uh, and you grab the horns of the altar uh, and the sweet Holy Ghost of God intercedes what's in your heart to God, uh, business will pick up. That's fuel for the presence of God. Uh, not only prayer, but praise. The Bible says that God inhabits the prayers of Israel or the praise of Israel. And can I say, if we truly learn praise, God will come sit down amongst us. That's what inhabitant means. I said this in my Sunday school class, and I, listen, I want to qualify this. I know some good Church of God people saved, washed in the blood, going to heaven just the same way I am. But there's a lot of things that Church of God people do that are not correct doctrinally. They want to add works to salvation. They, they want to add uh, that you've got to receive the Holy Ghost as a second blessing. They don't, uh, many of them don't believe in the security of the believer or eternal security. There's a lot of things doctrinally that they do not line up with. But can I say one thing they do right? They praise God. And can I say He's promised to bless them that praise Him? And they praise him so good, he winks at the ignorance of their doctrine, uh, and he still blesses them uh, because they do know how to praise him. Uh, I wonder what would happen in our churches because we got the book uh, and we got the right doctrine. Uh, what would happen if we truly start praising God the way he deserves? Uh, I tell you what would happen. Uh, there'd be a smoke that filled the house of God. Uh, it's fueled by prayer, it's fueled by praise, and it's fueled by preaching. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Now, he didn't choose foolish preaching. I've heard some foolish preaching. But what we do is foolishness to the world. It does not appeal to our intellects. Uh, preaching, re, uh, it appeals to our hearts, uh, and it reveals to our innermost parts uh, whether we are or not right with God. Uh, and God, uh, for, for whatever reason, uh, He ordains uh, Holy Ghost preaching, uh, uh, and His smoke uh, will show up when the preaching's right. Huh? I said it takes two things. It takes fuel. But it also takes oxygen. Oxygen is a picture of the Holy Ghost. The wind of the Holy Ghost. Now I found out some things about smoke. It not only needs fuel and oxygen. 
it can irritate and choke you if you're not equipped. It's amazing how when preaching and prayer and praise gets on, there are some people, they just get choked and can't handle it. Hmm? It just seems like it's a convenient time to run to the nursery or to run to the bathroom. Uh, or they got a, a, a date with a restaurant. They just got to get out of there. Uh, uh, they just can't handle it. Uh, you know why? They're not equipped. Uh, uh, but hey, if you got the whole armor of God on, uh, you can handle all the smoke God will blow your way. Uh, uh, but those that are not equipped, it, it, it irritates them. It'll choke them. Hmm? You know, it's amazing how many people I've made mad over 35 years of preaching for just telling them the truth. Hmm? Now, if I was like some politicians and told them lies, they would tell how great I am. But you tell folks the truth and what God says and what the Bible says, it irritates them. They're telling on themselves. Hmm? Hmm? Not only does smoke, smoke need fuel and oxygen, not only can it irritate and choke if you're not equipped, but I learned that smoke inhalation kills long before the fire does. And can I say the presence of God will cause us to die daily, die out to self, long before we get on fire for God. But those who reject God, it is the presence of God that will condemn them long before hell fire does. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a couple things and I'll be done about the smoke filling the house of God. Can I say, and I want you to look at your Bible... The smoke appeared when Christ is being exalted highly. Look again in verse number 1. In the year King Uzziah died. That's very important. Because before Uzziah died, everybody was paying attention to him. All the focus was on him. All the direction came from him. Uh, he was revered. Uh, uh, can I say even the prophet uh, uh, had given him too much credit uh, and too much ability. You know what some of your problem is tonight, today? Uh, uh, some of your problem is you got all your confidence in Brother Doug. Uh, if all you ever do uh, is see and hear Brother Doug, no wonder you're anemic spiritually. Uh, no wonder you don't have any victory in your life. Uh, I'm just a vessel. Uh, I'm just a mouthpiece. Uh, uh, the one you need to see uh, is looking under Jesus, uh, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, hey, and when Uzziah died, uh, and when you get your idols out of the way, uh, you're liable to be a good candidate for some smoke. Uh, hey, it said in the year King Uzziah died, uh, I saw also the Lord uh, sitting up on a throne, uh, high and lifted up, uh, and his train filled the temple. Uh, how can I say the snow, uh, smoke appears? Uh, when Christ is high and lifted up, uh, even Jesus himself said, And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. He was talking about the cross. But when we lift him up uh, uh, in prayer and in praise and in preaching, uh, folks' attention will get on him. And the smoke will fill the house of God. No Christ, no presence of God. The smoke appeared with Christ being exalted high. The smoke appeared uh, with the expression of humility. Look again in verse number 2. Above it, what? The throne of God. Stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Now I don't know... I just believe the Bible. I've heard people say, boy, I can't wait to see Jesus. I can't wait to run up and hug him. I've heard people call him the man upstairs. Uh, I've heard people call him my buddy. He's the Lord. And Brother Clint, if some of the most angelic of angelic beings... I mean, these are above his throne. These are not his cherubim that go and carry out uh, uh, very difficult things, and these aren't whatever other kind of angels, guardian angels and archangels. These are seraphim. And if these seraphim won't even look on him, 
they said with two of their wings they covered their face and with two of their wings they covered their feet showing humility that I'm not even worthy to be in your presence uh, I'm not worthy to look upon you uh, and the other two they just flew around uh, of the throne uh, uh, listen uh, you want to see the smoke fill here uh, John the Baptist said it best uh, he said he must increase uh, and I must decrease uh, uh, the lower we get uh, uh, the bigger he gets uh, and the bigger he gets uh, uh, the more candidate we are for smoke filling the house of God uh, it comes through humility don't ever think for one second that you're worthy to walk into God's house or you're worthy of his presence or you're worthy of anything from him other brother Clint I believe some people have the mentality if I come to church God's going to bless me let me help you some it is a blessing to come to church uh, if we got what we deserved we'd all be in hell today we don't get what we deserve and his only condition for blessing us is that he for whatever reason brother Bob loves us I don't know why he loves us there are days I don't even love me but there's never one instant or one second of one day that God doesn't totally love me uh, and he loves me to a fault uh, and he does desire the best for our lives uh, and hey if you haven't figured it out the best for our life is him uh, and when you come to the house seeking him you might just see the house filled with smoke the smoke appeared with Christ being exalted high the smoke appeared with the expression of humility and the smoke appeared with the exclamation of holiness in earnest praise listen to what the seraphim said they didn't say Lord it is good for us to be here they didn't say Lord bless me because I'm here no look at what they had to say in verse 3 and one cried unto another these seraphim uh, 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 they just started crying one to another. Now, I don't know how many of them was there, but all of them that were there were saying the same thing. What were they saying? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, the whole earth is full of His glory. Uh, listen, uh, uh, it'd be a great day uh, when we come to the end of ourselves uh, and we see Him for who He is. Uh, He's a thrice holy God uh, and He is worthy of uh, our sincerest praise. Uh, uh, cry out holiness to Him, uh, righteousness to Him, uh, glory to Him. Uh, give Him what is due His holy name. Uh, I don't see them seraphim coming to him with a shopping list of things they need this week. But I do, and I am reminded in Matthew 6 that if we seek him first in his righteousness, then all the things we have need of he'll add unto us. God help us to learn to exclaim him in earnest praise and exclaim his holiness. You know what you don't hear preached on? Holiness. You know what you don't hear taught on? Holiness. You, don't, you know what you don't see lived? Holiness. Hmm. Now let me just help you something. Let me go back and talk to my buddy Brother Bob. You don't sit up front, so I've got to walk all the way back here to see you. I do need the exercise. That's what my cardiologist is telling me. Thank you for reminding me. I thought you was my friend. Listen so many people have lost sight of who Jesus really is and we have lowered our standards but can I say holiness is not a list of rules brother Josh there are people who think they're holy because they wear a suit and tie uh, they think they're holy because they go to church all the time they think they're holy because brother Peter uh, there's places they don't go and things they don't choose to see can I say that you are separating yourself or sanctifying yourself in those deeds which is not a bad thing but that is not holiness holiness 
is where you come to the end of you and he takes over. And the more of him in you, the more holy you're going to walk and be. Hmm? Can I say, I do what I do not because of a list of rules. I do what I do because I want to please him. Hmm? But there are so many people, Brother James, they think holiness is being in the rules. That's called a Pharisee. That's not called being holy. Uh, can I help you something? I've known people that had the presence of God on them in ways that a lot of us today wouldn't even understand. And can I say, their doctrine wasn't always right, Brother, brother, brother Ron. They didn't know a lot about eschatology that we know, but they knew a whole lot about him. Hmm? Uh, can I say this? I never saw one outline that my granddaddy preached from. First outline I ever saw was the first one I ever wrote. You know why? Because my granddaddy didn't preach outlines. Mm -mm. I know that wouldn't fly today. But you know what he'd do late night hours, Saturday night, early night hours, Sunday morning? He'd go over and grab the horns of the altar. And when he walked into the house of God on Sunday, he had fresh oil. He didn't need an outline. He had the touch. There's a big difference when God shows up. Can I say, when they exclaimed the Lord and how holy he was, the smoke filled the house. Can I say, as a result of the smoke filling the house, and again, it happened when he was exalted highly. It happened when there was an expression of humility and it happened with the exclamation of his holiness. Yes. Something happened. Results took place. See. You say you want revival. You start doing those three things, you'll have revival. Notice what happens. First of all, it results in emphatic honesty. Verse number five, he says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Now we're talking about God's people, God's chosen people. He says, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. One glimpse of him, you'll see how short you come of his glory. That amazes me. We say that we're having revival, and most of you act like you're already revived, and you can't even find Malachi in the Bible. Hmm? You think you're revived but you haven't prayed all week. Some of you, if you've taken them prayer calendars, haven't prayed over them all day, every day. Some of you haven't prayed for a revival. You haven't prayed for the men of God that are coming. Mm -mm. You've lived your life, but you've lived it to satisfy you and not him. When he is put in his proper place, there'll be some emphatic honesty in your life. You know why you're not shouting right now? Because I'm hitting a nerve. That's why. Uh, uh. I wonder if Jesus came by your house one day this week. What would he find? Would he find a habitation of praise? Or would he find a war zone? I'm just preaching. That's all I'm doing. I, that's nowhere in my notes. The Lord gave me that. Hmm. Hmm. Young people, I wonder if he went to school with you this week, what, it, what would he find? Oh, you're on spring break. He wouldn't find anything this week, would he? Huh? Where's my homeschoolers? You're not on spring break. You've got to go. Huh? You really got to go. I've seen your grades. You really got to study. Huh? Your, your teacher grades you on a curve. Your benefit pays because of her. I'm just teasing you, Charlie. I have no idea. Huh? He got a little nervous. Where's Joseph? You're the one that needs to be on a curve. And I know that for a fact. No, I don't. That's like picking on your kids. But I wonder if Jesus went with you everywhere you go. What would he say? Because I've got news for you. He does go with you everywhere you go. See, when we see the Lord in proper perspective, it brings an emphatic honesty that we've come short of his glory and his grace. And I've got news for you, we do every day. But we need to recognize it and then do something about it. And that's what he did. He cried out to the Lord, I'm undone. And the Lord purges him. 
let me say this, I'll be done. Notice the ensuing honor. You'd think it'd be honor enough that he got to see the Lord. Think it'd be honor enough the presence of God, the smoke filled the house. I, I think I could go a long time on the energy of that. Then he admits what he is, and as a result, God gives him an honor that he never dreamed of. Look with me in verse number 8. Also I heard the voice. It's a blessing to hear from God. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will, who will go for us? Then said I, Here might send me. He overhears a conversation in heaven between the Father and the Son. He said, Whom shall I send who will go for us? He hears a call that he never heard before. God speaks to his heart and he says, Here my Lord, send me. He has an ensuing honor. He gets a call from God and now he's really going to be used of God. You want to help every one of us? If we're really used of God. He said, I'm not a preacher. You can still be used of God. I'm not a singer. You can be used of God. I'm not a teacher. You can be used of God. Everybody in here can be used of God in their prayer life. You can be used of God as a witness. You can be used of God as a light. You can be used of God in greater capacities than what you're being used today. And let me help you with something. It's not God's fault whether or not you're being used. One writer said that that conversation going on between the father and son may have been going on for a long time. But it wasn't until he came to the end of himself that he heard it. Mm -mm. I wonder today, what's it going to take for us to have the smoke fill the house? Wouldn't you like to see the presence of God like we've never seen before? It's going to take us seeing him high and lifted up. It's going to take us becoming humble. If my people which are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then it's going to take us proclaiming what he really is. Lord, King, he's holy, he's glorious, he's majestic. See, all that just keeps promoting him, putting him higher and higher, way out of our reach. And when we do that, we see us for what we are. And then God does for us what we can't do for ourselves. You'll hear the voice of the Lord in your life in ways you've never heard. Why be satisfied with what you know? Why don't we seek Him and find out what He has to offer? It's a whole lot more than just coming to church. You start putting these things into practice, you'll start having church. And it's a much, much better thing. It's been a long time since I've seen the smoke. I sure would like to see it fill the house. And the only way it can fill the house is absence of flesh. God help us to come to the end of ourselves. Did he speak to your heart today? If he did, the altars are open. Brother Clint, if you'll come, get a song of invitation. If you're here today and you're not saved, if you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. That's the greatest need you have in your life. But if you're here and you're saved, the greatest need you have in your life is more of him. It's revival. So if God spoke to your heart, you mind the Lord as they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for Isaiah's experience. And Lord, we know it was written for our ensample. And Lord, we won't literally see smoke, but we can literally have the presence of God like we've never had before. Help us this day to put you in the proper place, high and lifted up. Help us to truly learn to humble ourselves before you. And help us, Lord to exclaim your wonderfulness and your holiness. God, have your way in this invitation. Bless these on the altar. Speak to hearts. Save that one near's tail. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.